Welcome to Lifestyle Med with Dr. Jade. Health, it's a lifestyle. Hey everybody. Uh, good to see you guys again for our second live, our second Motivation Monday as we talk about resilience today. Tonight we're talking about uh, resilience and how, to, how we overcame and are overcoming challenges in medicine, which definitely can apply to any career field, doesn't just have to be medicine. So we are so excited. Looks like we are connecting. Hi, good to see you. Hey. Hey, Jamisa, good to see you. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Welcome back for week two. Hey, I'm so excited. <laughs> I am too. Last week was so much fun. For those it was. Of you, <laughs> for those of you who uh, weren't here last week, just to kind of recap what this is all about. So this is our Mentorship Monday. Hey, everybody joining. This is our Mentorship Monday series that Jamisa and I have um, started collaborating on. Jamisa is my mentee, also our social media intern on the, at the Dr. JMD team. And um, she came to me and was like, you know, I really think having a segment on Mentorship Mondays would be something that med students would love, especially med students of color. It'd be great to just glean advice when it comes to different topics that I would really like to ask somebody ahead of me in the medical journey. And I'm like, all about mentorship. So I was like, mm -hmm. absolutely. Last week, we talked about uh, microaggressions. Jamisa, mm -hmm. I've been letting her guide the ship when it comes to what the topics are. And definitely, we're hearing from you guys on what you want to hear about. So please comment below if there's other Mentorship Monday topics you're interested in. We're going to keep this series going uh, for as long as Jamisa's uh, medical school schedule allows. Um, <laughs> but last week, she wanted to talk about microaggressions and being Black in medicine. If you guys missed that one, I do have it on my timeline on my Instagram. I also put it on my YouTube channel today, both, and that link is in my bio. So this week, though, Jamisa, you wanted to talk about resilience. Yes. Resilience, resiliency, um, and specifically like overcoming struggles in medicine. So give us a recap on who you are, where you're at, and uh, why you chose this topic for this week. Okay, so as some of you may know, I'm a third year student. I'm from the little island of Dominica, and I go to Ross University School of Medicine. I chose this topic because medical school has been the hard, by, by far, the hardest thing that I have ever done in my life. And, you know, I feel like I've been through some pretty challenging things. I mean, I've lost loved ones. I've done, I've done surgery. I've survived through a Category 5 hurricane. <laughs> and still, like, med school is, like, hands down the most difficult thing. Um, so a part of me wants to know, like, you know, how did Dr. Jade and all the other doctors out there, how did they get to where they are um because i've had times when i'm like yeah i don't want to do this anymore i just want to pack my bags go home and sit on the beach take a swim relax like most of my friends are doing like i'm tired of being stressed out all the time so i thought it would be like really helpful to hear what i'm um, someone who's been through it all the way and who's and who's still going through challenges of this career how you know she has been resilient in medical in medis through medicine and keeps on being resilient. Yeah, that is awesome. I wanted to definitely recap the definition or some definitions of resiliency that I found, just so we're all on the same page on what this is, what it means. Two definitions that I liked. One was that resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. And then there was a simple definition, one word definition that I found too, that they defined resilience simply as toughness. And mm -hmm. so um, I'm happy to answer any questions about this. My road has been rough, okay? Mm -hmm. I am very transparent about my medical journey being difficult. It's a part of my testimony. Uh, I think it's a part of what makes my journey beautiful. Although I didn't find it to be beautiful back in the day, I was like, God, why? Why the torture? You know, did, you told me this is what you called me to, but it is rough. It is horrible. And I feel you. I wanted to quit um, a few times along my journey, too. And so I'm definitely always open to share about the real of my journey, the ups, the downs, the failures. Um, I'm a perfectionist at heart. 
And I yeah. don't like to Same. fail. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like to fail. And I did not like that, but it was very much a part of my journey. Uh, I got knocked down so many times. And uh, God has brought me through, and I definitely learned some pearls to resiliency that has, has helped me to get to this point um, in my final months of residency, transitioning to the to the very end. Hi, everybody. I see you guys joining. and Welcome. <laughs> Uh, I can't yeah. wait to hear those pearls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you My tell notebook you is ready. So tell me, what are some things, Jamisa, that you are going through um, in this stage? And what things have kept you resilient at this point? And then I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, so um, I would say my biggest challenge in, med in medical school is anxiety. Mm. <laughs> um and it's so strange because I was not an anxious person going into it. I never had an anxiety problem before. But so, you know, sometimes we say that med school brings out the worst in you. <laughs> and um, like for me, you know, being a perfectionist, always wanting to excel and be on top. And, you know, things would, would come to me um, relatively easily before. I would, you know, take my time, draw things out, and they would stick and I would be able to kill my exams, um, kill my courses. But with the med school, it was just so fast paced. It was just so much. And um, my like, it really made me anxious. And then the anxiety of wanting to do so well and wanting to do so much would cause me not to be able to do so well or to do as much as I would like to. And then I found myself, you know, caught in this vicious cycle. Um, so, like, anxiety has definitely been um, one of my challenges um, to a point where I even, you know, considered, like, is this career worth my mental health? Because this is a mental health condition that I did not have before I started this career. And, you know, if this is going to be my life, then I don't, like, I don't want this. Um, so there has been that thought. So that's um, that's one thing, the anxiety. Um and, you know, there's like this feeling of inadequacy that I battle with, especially being a little black girl from a little small island that nobody knows about. Um, you know, just speaking to like, you know, doctors in the U.S., speaking to attendings, sometimes you feel out of place. You feel like you don't belong. Um, so it's very challenging for me, especially even having um, like simple things like having an accent, <laughs> um, you know, Things like that really make me feel inadequate, and that's also a challenge. Time management, because you know, as medical students, like the clock never stops. There's always so many things to do, and then you know, everyone tells you, "Hey, you have to be well-rounded. Get involved in clubs. Do research. Do this. Do that. Take care of your health. Don't forget about your family." And you know, real most times, I feel like I have to dump something to get everything done and most times that thing is my mental health <laughs> um which leads back to um the anxiety and just you know crashing and being unable to function sometimes so that's a supreme challenge for me and um another thing like test taking i feel like the american system it's so heavy on tests and that is by far my greatest challenge. These USMLE exams give me so much anxiety because they're just exams that are on one day, eight hours, and you're like, it feels like your entire future depends on that one eight hour exam. Like, <laughs> I had nightmares. I had nightmares about doing step one for months. Um, and I think, I think, and I think, I think everyone, <laughs> every med student feels the same way about these exams. Um, but, you know, even just mustering up the courage to go and um, to, to go and do an exam, that's a challenge because it's like, it feels like life or death sometimes. Um, and then also, I feel like some people are very good test takers. Um Again, I come from the Caribbean system. In the Caribbean system, we do a lot of short answer and essay type exams. So transitioning to like solely multiple choice, that's very, that's still very fresh and very new to me. Um, so I don't think I'm the strongest test taker, even though I try. 
and then being a perfectionist i'm not the person who can like you know go through notes go through content really fast i have to go through everything and highlight and circle and draw it out so you know my friends will have gone through like you know an entire book and i'm still on one chapter um that's a challenge and I don't even know. I honestly don't even know how I'm still here, <laughs> how I've survived through three years. I think it's just, um, I think it's just God, honestly, because to be, to be, to be transparent, there have been times when I've just literally, um, there, ha there was one time when I tried to withdraw. I tried to withdraw from med school. I was just so anxious, so frustrated. I did not want to do it anymore. Um, and I don't know how I'm still here. I don't know how I've survived, like, all my exams so far, how I survived step one. Um, I'm grateful. Um, so I think it's, it's all to God. Um, you know, so having, like, a family who believe, who really believes in me, I feel like I have to keep going to um, not disappoint them because they believe in me so much. I'm like, wow, they believe in me so much. I might as well believe in myself. Um, and I guess I've met some really amazing friends along the way. Um, and I guess just suffering through it with my friends, um, and looking at their strength, that's helped. Like, Hey, if they're, if they're, if they're gonna struggle on, I might as well struggle on with them. But like, my question is, um, <laughs> Like at this point in at this point in life, I'm like, okay, that's just one step down. I have two more. I have two more steps to go. There's still step two. There's still step three. Um, there are all these shelf exams. Like, how do you, how do you keep facing so much? How do you keep functioning at such like a high stress level, um, so continuously, and keep going? How do you um, not just give up and <laughs> go back home and you know do something else with your life yeah how did wow. you get to where you are right now you gave me so much in that and you know what's beautiful about this thank you for your vulnerability and for really tapping into something people don't like to talk about and medicine is so competitive and everybody likes to pretend they have it all together um that it's not a lot of safe places where we can say I'm anxious, or I feel like quitting, or I am struggling with test taking. It's not, there aren't enough outlets for this. And I think this is just so beautiful that you share this. I, there is so much of you and me and um, everything you've talked about, I have gone through and I have experienced. So I really um, connect with you on so many of those things. And I totally agree. The short answer, I'm going to give you lots of things, but the short answer um, that I know will connect with you is that I'm here because of God. Um, there's yeah. no doubt about it. Everything about my journey says that I should not be a doctor today. Everything about my journey, a little girl who was born in Chicago, um, you know, on the South side and then moved to Las Vegas with, which is, I think we were number 49 out of 50 in school districts. So the, wow. the second to worst school district in the country when I was in <laughs> Vegas. Um, wow. it didn't prepare me for the savageness of <laughs> medicine, you know, for undergrad or med school. Um, for me, studying was nothing in, through high school. I was a straight A. I graduated with a uh, right? 4.4 GPA. I didn't even have to think about it. And I had all these sports I was into, all types of things, um, because the system wasn't a challenging system yet. But then when I got to undergrad and I was a pre-med, it was a whole new world because there was no more homework. There was no more extra credit. There were three tests and the average, and that's your grade, and that's it. And I, I hadn't developed my test-taking skills. Um, a quick background on Las Vegas School District, not to put my city down too much, but um, at the time, they had this system where if you scored over a 97% or more in the class, you didn't have to take a final exam. And so mm -hmm. I gained the system all through high school. And I was like, well, I'm just going to make sure I always have over a 97%. And then I'll never right. have to take a final exam because those stress me out. So like, why? Let me just do that. And I can count maybe two final exams I had to take all through high school because of that. And so... I thought it was so smart, so genius. 
But Med school should be like that. <laughs> no, it's horrible. It seemed so amazing back in the day. But then when I got to undergrad, there was no mm -hmm. homework. There was no extra credit. It was just three tests, average, that's your grade. And I hadn't ever really taken a test outside of the ACT. And so I was so behind in the skills that are required to, to right. succeed in medicine as a pre-med and a medical student. So I kind of want to take your different points kind of chunk by chunk because uh, they are all very important and all very pertinent. So the first one you talked about, and I jotted them down as you were going, was stress management and anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very common for medical students to either be more on the anxious side or more on the depressive side as stressful things come their way. And I, too, was more on the anxiety side when it came to tests, especially. Um, most things in medicine I was comfortable with until you gave me, like, a standardized test where yeah. you have to just say it's either A or B or D because my mind uh, is abstract. I'm an artist in my mind, so I see pictures, and I like to explain, and I like to draw, yes. and I like to you know, be hands on. So if I see this black and white sheet of paper or this just computer screen with four choices, I'm like, well, if you think about it like this, it could be this. But if you think about it like this, it could be this. And that is not what they want you to do on test. They want you to read it and pick an answer and go. And that's just not how my mind works. So I struggled a lot. And it made me anxious because I felt like I had to fit in a box um, that this test wanted me to fit in. And my mind didn't uh, naturally think in that way. So Things that helped me when it came to anxiety were uh, fitness. Uh, first of all, a healthy lifestyle and like the basics of a healthy lifestyle. Early on, I would like I was losing weight because I would skip eating, not on purpose. I didn't have like a eating disorder, but I just would be so into studying for hours and hours and hours on end in the library that wow. lunch time would pass, breakfast would pass, dinner would pass. So I was losing weight. And my dad came to visit me and he's like, you are skin and bones. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, all I do is study. And I thought that's what I had to do to, mm -hmm. to make it. But it was counterproductive. So um, taking care of myself, I had to learn to do that. I had to work out. That's huge in my stress, de-stressing. Even to this day, it always will be for me. Um, prayer, huge. Making time for God. Being active in ministry was important. And being connected to my support system. Uh, my family, my husband, my child in this season, but back in the day, you know, still talking to my friends, things like that. So that was more so how I dealt with anxiety. And just for full disclosure, um, earlier in my med school career, I had gone through like a horrible breakup and all these things, and I got a therapist. And that was very helpful to me in that season. And so I also encourage that. I know therapy isn't something like the Black community talks about a whole lot. And I don't want to just say the Black community, just many communities stigmatize. Yeah. Um, but that was what I needed in that season. And it, it helped me a lot. So all of that helped with anxiety. Then you talked about like doubting your abilities and feeling like, you know, do I belong? And yeah. I know a lot of people will like call this imposter syndrome. <laughs> and so... I am big on positive self-talk. Like, I am the positive self-talk queen. Even if I don't know Jack, I'm going to be like, I got this. I know this. If people are like, you don't know? And I'm like, I do. And so, and that's huge. I, I believe in manifesting what you desire and, you know, thinking it, believing it is the first step to making it happen. I feel that way. And that has worked for me. And also having scriptures, um, that keep me going helps with the imposter syndrome. Um, I feel like when it came to imposter syndrome, it was more so people doubting me than me doubting myself. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely had periods of doubting my test taking abilities. But outside of that, I really believed I would make an amazing physician. Like I believe that to the core because of how much I care about my patients and and my why and, and seeing them so clearly like, oh, I, I know the community I want to help. I know the people I want to impact. I know I want to do medicine different. And I know mm -hmm. I want to treat my patients like they're my family. So because I had all of that ingrained, I was like, I'm going to be an amazing doctor. I just have to get past all these hurdles that are required to, to make that happen. Um, 
so that was more of my imposter syndrome is like other people doubting me being like girl you are not a good test taker I don't think you're gonna make it like it was more so people telling me that so much along my journey that I had to like shut that out shut it down what God told me which is you are gonna be a doctor but it won't be easy and and just take it one bite at a time one chunk at a time and keep gnawing away at it let me know if you want to cut back in because I know you talked about time management and test taking but I know I kind of addressed test taking I, I'll just talk about time management really quick I am the checklist queen so <laughs> that really helped me but my issue is I would always make these super um elaborate unrealistic checklists that uh -huh. no human being could complete in one day which will put more stress on myself I feel you. It, yeah. It's so much fun making those. So much fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the first thing I do in the morning is make a checklist, even to this day. But now I have learned to just limit myself to three things a day um, and, and get those and then celebrate when I have completed those. And that has really helped me to, to get things done and to manage my time and than to just enjoy after that. When I was a med student though, I really had to have a strict cutoff time. So I would have a start time and a cutoff time. And when my cutoff time hit, if that was 4 p.m., I was done for the day. And then it was gym, mm -hmm. dinner. I would, I had to get to the point where I was like, I don't function well concentration wise and mentally if I get less than six hours of sleep. So I would make sure I prioritize my sleep, prioritize my fitness, prioritize my prayer, like all these like regular healthy lifestyle things. Nice. Um, once I started doing that, I started being more focused when I would be in my study sessions versus just being in the library from open to close, torturing myself and trying to force yeah. myself <laughs> to cram all the information. You know, that's really good because I mean, like I'm the person who would be like, yeah, I'm just going to study till... 6 p.m. and I'll like wake up <laughs> and start studying eat some cereal while I'm studying I'm like yeah I'll be done by 6 p.m. then it's 6 p.m. and I'm like okay 7 o'clock <laughs> then I'm like 8 o'clock then before I know it I'm like sleeping and I wake up the next morning like with bookmarks on my face <laughs> yep been there so I really like that have a start time and a cut off time Absolutely. And then the other thing that really helped me when it came to studying and, um, and time management was to have timers, like one hour timers. Um, and so, for example, if I was going to be studying and it was like 10 o'clock, I would set a 10 to 11 o'clock timer. Like I'd have my phone on the other side of the room on silent and, you know, whatever relaxing music that I like to study to. And I would have a focus one hour undistracted and as soon as the timer went off I would get I would get out of the room walk around go outside and then set like a 15 or 20 minute timer for a break to go to the bathroom eat snacks get some sunlight and then come back and be like okay Siri set a one hour timer and then I do it again and that also really mm -hmm. helped me to take it in little chunks throughout the day where I was focused um helps me to retain the information no, I'm just tracking back. Um, for dealing with imposter syndrome, you said that you reminded yourself of your why, why you wanted to be a physician, and I think like, I think that might be like really the key to being resilient and you know pressing forward even in the face of adversity. Um, but for me personally, I feel like when I'm going through my struggles, I don't remember my why mm -hmm. I just I just see the struggle I just see the stress and like I just feel like how much I don't want to do it anymore um so like what would be your advice for you know remembering your why keeping your why at the front of your mind yeah so again I'm a super visual person so vision boards were always something that worked really well for me even vision boards on my phone are something I really like now I know a technique a lot of people like is having their vision board like once they take a picture of it and they have it as their screensaver on their phone because you look at your phone all throughout the day and so little things like that um would just be in my face where I would have it on my wall I would have quotes all around my house I would have scriptures like 
on the bathroom, I would have a scripture. I don't know if you remember the show, like, Being Mary Jane, but yeah, <laughs> yeah she had these, like, stickies everywhere. I wasn't, like, that bad with it, but <laughs> I was definitely in key places where I would be at. Like, if I, in my kitchen, on my fridge, I had a little scripture um, because I would have moments where I would cook for long periods of time. So definitely having those around my house helped. Um, the thing about a vision board is it's, it manifests when you look at it regularly. So that's why because everybody's attached to their phone. I really like having my vision board as a picture on my phone. Mm -hmm. That's a really good idea. Because I know I personally need that um, reminder, like, why I'm doing this, because I forget a lot. <laughs> yeah. And another thing for me, I'm, like, super competitive. Like, I am like, like, if you play a game with me, you will know I am like competitive. You'll be like, dang, it's just Uno. But I'm like, I, I gotta win, you know? <laughs> and so a part of my story that made me so competitive to finish was outside of the fact that I knew God called me to it. But a little bit of my testimony is um, in preschool, I, at that time, I knew as a child, I think at three years old or something, my family said I started saying I wanted to be a doctor. And at preschool, all through the year, they were like, the last day of school, we have this thing where we say what you want to be when you grow up, you dress like what you want to be, and then each child had to stand up and say what they wanted to be. Aww. And so I was so excited all year. And so I had came to school in this white coat, and I went last each child stood up and like most little girls were like I want to be a mom I want to be a teacher I want to be you know all these things most boys were like I want to be a police officer I want to be a firefighter and then I stood up and I was like I want to be a doctor and my teacher pulled me to the side and was like Jade I think you'll make a good nurse and this is nothing against nurses or any other health professional. Everybody's role is so important. But at that moment, I didn't understand why when I said I wanted to be a doctor, why she pulled me to the side um, with concern in her face saying, I, I don't, basically, I don't think you can do that. And so- Why can't you be a doctor? <laughs> well, you know, that was when my parents, you know, took me and when I went home and I asked them, I was like, why don't she, why do my teacher say I can't be a doctor? Uh, you know, and they explained to me about why she didn't believe a little black girl from the South side of Chicago could be a doctor. Um, and that's when I learned about race in America. And they took me to the DuSabo Museum in Chicago and taught me about slavery and my history at four. Like what four-year-old needs to already start this whole thing. But that's when it started for me understanding history and understanding why other people didn't believe um, what God had already showed me. And so I say all that to say that uh, when it comes to resiliency, I just focused on what God told me. And he told me that I was called to be a doctor. And the competitive part about it is whenever I thought I wanted to quit, I would think about that teacher's face. And then I'd be like, mm -hmm. mm, no, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and then <laughs> literally when I crossed the stage at graduation, I saw that teacher's face. And I like put a little bit of extra swag on my, on my sachet across stage because I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, like God said, I'm called to be a doctor. So I love that. Is, resilience is key and having those those things that keep you going and knowing my why definitely kept me going I think it's um I think I think this journey has been very humbling too because um like you said and like I said like things were things were a lot easier before and um I'm very competitive too. I don't do things that I can't win at. So I don't play any sports because I have two left hands, two left feet. I can't play any sports, right? So I don't do that. Um <laughs> but you know, I could always do it academically and so like I'm here, I'm expecting to, you know, slay every exam, kill everything. And that's not the case. And I think um, you know, sometimes God sometimes God humbles you. Um because yeah. that arrogance is not necessarily a good thing. Um, and I feel like, you know, like for me, I can relate to so many more people on this level than having gone through this journey without any struggles. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's how I felt about it, too. I was just like, God, I like to just be the best at everything. Yeah. But that humility is so key. That is what keeps me uh not walking around like i'm a doctor like not at all like 
<laughs> that journey of being knocked down and fighting and trying your best and being knocked down, that humility, it built character and it built integrity and it kept me human and kept me and kept my ego in check. Like I have no ego because I've been so stripped down in this <laughs> journey. And that is beautiful because people can connect to that, right? People can connect to what's real, what's raw, what's vulnerable. Uh, just walking around being like, yeah, I'm a doctor. I'm smart. I know everything. I mean, what's the fun in that? Like, who wants to hear that story? <laughs> yeah. Um, and as much as, and when I was a med student, I wanted that to be my story. <laughs> but now I see the beauty in it. And I'm thankful for how challenging it was because it just makes this so much more special. I, I cherish my patients so much. I, I feel honored to be their doctor. When I walk in the, the office and they're shocked that I'm their doctor, um, when I leave a room and I have a Black patient tell me, girl, I am just so proud of you, doctor. Like, those moments are what just make me want to cry. And it makes it all worth it. It makes it all worth it. Yeah, and you know, like, it's really inspiring just, like, seeing you where you are right now, knowing that you've been what you've been through knowing that you've been through so many things and that you are where you are right now. That is, um, that's very inspiring. That's very encouraging. And I think, um, I think that is one of the things like that is definitely going to help me keep going. Cause like right now I'm like, wow, if Dr. Jade could do it, um, then who, who then why should, why should I give up on myself? Yeah. Um, so thank you. Um, and I think like, I think having a mentor, um, having a mentor really contributes to that resilience because you know like your family your family want to see you do well but sometimes they don't get it they don't get it yeah <laughs> um but you know just being able to relate to somebody who has been through the struggle and has already overcome um that's powerful because sometimes you can't you can't see the other side um right now it's hard for me to see myself um in that long white coat it's hard for me to see myself um as an actual doctor i've been a student for <laughs> 20 something years <laughs> um yeah so just like so even though i can't necessarily see myself in that position right now i can see you and that's um that's very helpful that's golden wow and moments like this make it all worth it because you're right. Family loves us so much that they don't want to see us suffer. They don't want to see us in pain. I remember my grandma, God rest her soul, she loved me and she was like, Jade, what about pharmacy? Like, we could try something <laughs> else. Like, you look horrible. You are suffering. Um, you know, I had other people be like, you know, there are other types of medical professionals. Like, and I was just like, God called me to be a doctor. And so it hurts right now. It sucks right now. I know I am skin and bones and always in a cold library, but that's what this phase is. And just pray for me. And I would just ask him, just pray for me um, because I'm not going to quit. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there were moments where I would fail a test and I would want to quit. But then I would remember my why and visualize my future patients and be like, okay, I'm not going to quit. Um, so yeah, sticking to that. I want to leave you with some pearls. Uh, I know we're coming up on time here, but I want to, I thought about what my, my keys to resiliency have been in my journey. And so I wrote those down. And so I came up with five main things that were my five keys or pearls uh, to resiliency. And so my first thing we've already talked about, which was having a why, being clear about your why, reminding yourself of your why, and visualizing that, okay? And then number two was prayer and my relationship with God. And that can look different for everybody. I know that we are both uh, women of Christ, but people don't have to believe what we believe. But having um, something bigger than ourselves that connects us to um, to what's important and what and why we are here and what what our purpose is, you know, that that kept me um, being resilient yeah. as well. Uh, number three was family. And even though I couldn't always be with my family, even though I had to sometimes miss um, important events and miss weddings and birthdays and celebrations, and it sucked. Um, but just knowing that they have my back and just being to being able to text them, connect with them, get a quick picture from them, 
uh, made all the difference in having that support system. We talked about support systems last week and microaggressions. Um, yeah. Number four is serving others. And we didn't really talk much about this, but that was huge in my journey. I would create all types of programs along my journey, programs for elementary school uh, students, programs mm -hmm. for teen girls of color. Um, we created, I created a 5K in the neighborhood to promote health and wellness. So, but as I would mm -hmm. serve others, it would recharge me and be like, okay, that's more important than the little thing I'm going through right that's now. That's beautiful. That's yeah. really beautiful. So in, in ministry, I was a praise dancer and just, you know, serving just serving just made me really refill my cup. Um, and then the fourth, the five, the fifth thing, the last thing uh, was refilling my cup. And yes, in the form of all the things I just talked about, but really with having a healthy lifestyle, um, having the boundaries on that at least six hours of sleep, um, exercising regularly, eating healthy, um, doing other things that I enjoy, having a night off. Every Friday night at four o'clock, I was done. And I had like this Friday night routine. Oh, I think she left. I think she popped back on. I love you guys for being here. Thank you so much. I think uh, Jamisa got popped off. But this was amazing. That was my fifth and last point anyway. Uh, I'll just tell her about it because we have each other's number. But this was amazing. I think she's back. Here we go. Let me uh, connect her back on real quick so we can wrap up. Thank you guys all for being here. I've been reading all the comments. You guys are amazing. Yeah, it's all good. I was like, I can always tell her the final point. <laughs> oh, no, I got it. I got it. We yeah, got us connected for a while, cool. but I got it. Refill in your cup. <laughs> yes, healthy lifestyle. All the things I talk about on my YouTube channel, right, on Wellness Wednesday. So, um this was amazing. I look, Jimmy. So, what is our topic for next week? So people know. Okay, so next week, um, and this topic is very important to me. <laughs> we're gonna talk about dating in medical school. Um, finding time to date. <laughs> yeah. How to date in medical school? It's gonna be all about that. All about romance. So romance. for all you dating single, for all you, for all you singles out there, <laughs> you don't want right, to miss this. <laughs> That's going to be fun. So next week, we'll talk about dating and med school. I hope you guys enjoyed this week on resilience. If you missed us last week, check out my timeline. We talked about microaggressions and being Black in medicine. And it's also on my YouTube channel. And the link is in my bio to that as well. I will also save this one to my timeline and put this on my YouTube channel too. So we'll see you next week when we talk about love and dating in medicine and finding love while you're <laughs> being a med student <laughs> so <laughs> i look forward to seeing y'all next week and i love these talks jamisa if you guys have any i really other do this topics, was so much fun let us know <laughs> yes let us know <laughs> below if there's any other topics you're interested in us doing on our mentorship monday series all right see you guys bye bye <laughs> be sure to like comment share and subscribe thank you and god bless